I am Nora Rhodes. I'm a Kansas State Research and Extension Family and Youth Development Agent in the Post Rock Extension District. The Post Rock Extension District serves Jewel, Lincoln, Mitchell, Osborne, and Smith counties in North Central Kansas. Today, we're going to talk about social and emotional learning. Before I go further, you're probably wondering, what is this? Well, let's talk about this concept. According to the Collaboration for Academic Social Emotional Learning, also known as CASEL, social and emotional learning is the process through which children and adults acquire and effectively apply the knowledge, attitudes, and skills necessary to understand and manage emotions, set and achieve positive goals, feel and show empathy toward others, establish and maintain positive relationships, and make responsible decisions. Social and emotional learning is also sometimes referred to as the soft skills. So why are, is social and emotional learning important? Why is it an essential part of youth, child, or young child, youth, adolescent, um, and adult development? Social and emotional learning, it enhances a young child, a student, and an adult's capacity to integrate skills, attitudes, and behaviors to deal with, deal effectively and ethically with daily tasks and challenges. These social skills, communication skills, higher order thinking, self-control, and positive self-concept are important to success in school, work, and personal relationships. So national and state research has really started to focus on understanding social and emotional learning and the skills and how it applies to youth and adults. They've been focusing on this more and more throughout the past decade. What we've been able to do learn through this research has been a lot uh, closely linked with understanding what employers find to be attractive in their employees. So, so what draws them to hiring an employee and to focus on retaining this employee? What employers are telling us through this research and through these focus groups is that they're highly attracted to employees with a, a strong foundation of social and emotional skills. So social and emotional learning is incredibly important. They know that if someone has a strong social and emotional foundation, that they can then train them, they're more likely to be successful at training them with the academics and the very specific tasks that are needed um, in the, the work specific workforce. So what exactly is social and emotional learning? Castle's gonna help us understand some social and emotional skills and how it applies to development. The first is self-awareness. This is the ability to recognize one's emotions and thoughts and their influence on behavior. Next, they talk about self-management. Self-management is the ability to regulate one's emotions and behaviors effectively in different situations. So this would include stress management and controlling your impulses. Social awareness is the ability to take the perspective of and to empathize with others. Relationship skills is the ability to establish and maintain healthy and rewarding relationships uh, with both individuals and groups when we're talking about relationship skills. And this also involves listening and cooperation. Responsible decision making is the ability to make constructive and respectful choices about your interactions with yourself and others. Next, we're going to explore how social and emotional skills can be applied um, in an everyday interaction. Make a difficult choice an easy one with Cedar View Assisted Living's knowledgeable and caring staff. Your loved one will be professionally taken care of as they transition into their new community. With movies, holiday parties, planned exercises and games, residents will have opportunities every day to enjoy their time at Cedar View. Multiple room styles are available, ensuring a just right fit for your loved one. Come see Cedar View Assisted Living for yourself next to Sternberg Museum. The care you need, the home you want. Hi. We're looking for insurance. Oh, let's see who's free. Jerry. When insurance agents work for only one company, Michael. their options are simply limited. Everybody. 
But a trusted choice independent agent is free to shop many companies for a better deal. Free to do what's right for you. Let us shop for you. Contact Rogers & Associate to learn more. Come on down to Bees Bargains at Smith Center, Kansas. We got the deals. We have a wide variety of inventory like soap, toiletries, toys, mini fridges, even kitchen tables. Everything is new at Bees Bargains, but it's all half the price. Yes, half price. That isn't just a good deal, that's a great deal. And with new items daily, our inventory is constantly changing. That means new, great deals are coming in by the truckload weekly. Bees Bargains at Smith Center. If you can't find a deal here, you can't find one anywhere. T-Max Trucking, LLC, delivers service you can depend on and serves all of Northwest Kansas. They have shale pits located from Logan to Wakini that provide convenient access to your location. T-Max Trucking specializes in road maintenance and they have a dozer, dump truck, backhoe, and grader to get the job done right. Their locally based business was established in 2012 and is both licensed and insured. Let T-Max Trucking, LLC, deliver service you can depend on. Welcome back. I'm Nora Rhodes with Kansas State Research and Extension. Now we're going to dig into better understanding what the process of using your social and emotional skills is like in an everyday experience. Uh, to do that, uh, we reference an acronym uh, given to us by Yale University with permission to use for educational outreach and education. Uh, and programming and so that acronym is called ruler yep just like the ruler that you um, use to measure things and so that kind of gives you a linear visual well when you're teaching this process um, to build the skill set of very young children and up it is a linear process because a young child or a child who has not yet mastered this skill set they have to start at the beginning and master those skills before they can move on in the process However, once um, we maybe are a mastered adolescent with the skill set or an, a young adult or in continuing in our adulthood, we are, are more likely to kind of bounce around the process, at least with our intentional thinking, uh, because it becomes a little bit a part of us the same way that our heart beats, but we don't intentionally tell our heartbeat. So when we're approached with an experience, um, once we have a strong foundation of social emotional development, we're able to just kind of quickly make a decision and our brain doesn't even really tell us that it walked through that process with you. So let's go through this with an everyday experience. R means recognizing that you are actually experiencing an emotion. So when we recognize that we're experiencing an emotion, what we're doing is we're thinking about all five of our senses. So we're thinking about sound, sight, touch, smell and taste. So I'm going to give you an example to kind of demonstrate how all of our senses can can provide a way for us to um, recognize that we're experiencing an emotion. My current emotional experience is exhaustion. Everything I have had to eat or drink today has tasted really bland. My sense of touch feels heavier than usual, and the sounds and sights around me are initially blurred. It takes extra time for conversation, thoughts, and actions to come into focus today. So hopefully that gives you a quick idea of how our five senses really do help us um, recognize that, hey, something's happened. Maybe it's positive or maybe it's negative. The next thing we need to do is understand the emotion that we're experiencing. And that means understanding what has triggered that emotion as well as what the consequences of that emotional experience are. So for the example that I just gave you, the trigger would be related to, for example, my work and my personal life have been incredibly busy lately. I've been chasing kids around at school activities. I have a lot on my plate at work. And so I've really been putting my self-care needs uh, low on my list. 
That means I haven't been getting as much sleep as I typically need. I have not been choosing nutritious meals, meals and snacks. I haven't been drinking enough water. And the conversations with the people um, in my life, my family and my friends, have maybe been more forceful and more survival mode uh, rather than being something that would benefit our mental health. And so all of these triggers are giving me this emotionally exhausting experience. Well, what's the consequence? The, the general consequence is that I'm probably not doing things as well as I normally do them. I, I'm kind of just going through the motions. My productivity is down. I'm slow to understand. I'm not actively listening. I'm not seeming very professional at work. And maybe I have a short patience at home, level of patience at home. Next, we move into labeling this emotion. So when we label an emotion is where we start to hear feelings, okay? Feelings and emotions, that language kind of gets intermixed. Uh, what, what I under, the way I understand it is um, once we give our emotion a label, a word, or you know, some way to describe it, it becomes what we call a feeling. So we have been learning from the moment we have been born uh, our communication patterns. So whether that's having a language or knowing how to non-verbally communicate something. And this is included in our social and emotional experience. And so it's important as you're working with very young children, uh, adolescents, um, and young adults, and even further in adulthood that we're thinking about, you know, what does my feelings vocabulary look like? Can I find the words and the ways to communicate what my experience is? So here's an example. If I'm having a pleasant experience, maybe instead of happy, uh, my word choice would be I'm feeling festive, I'm energetic, I'm feeling um, thrilled, surprised, uh, sympathetic today. But maybe if my, I'm not having a pleasant experience, it's unpleasant, uh, my words instead of being sad or mad, which is the very simple language that a young child is learning, a more advanced vocabulary would be, I'm disappointed, I'm irritated, I'm feeling powerless, I'm being pessimistic today, I'm vulnerable, I'm fatigued, I'm exhausted. Expressing our emotion is the next part of this process. And we learn how to express our emotions from the environment around us. So just like from the moment you're born, you are learning how to speak your language, you are also learning what societal norms are in your particular environment. So maybe your family, uh, your friends, your community, just society as a whole, the culture, is telling you how to express yourself. Now, Expressing yourself doesn't automatically assume that that's a positive way to express it. You could have learned a way to express something that is not very healthy. And we'll get into that in the, the next portion here. But let's think about how we might express our emotions. A short temper, uh, shutting down and not talking to anyone. Maybe we just decide that it's okay to miss an assignment or show up late to work. Those would be kind of not so positive expressions of emotion, but maybe some positive ones would be is, I, I understand that I'm exhausted and I'm not communicating well, so I'm gonna ask for a timeout. Say, hey, can I have 10 minutes to get my stuff together and, and then come back into this conversation? Um, maybe you, you reach out for help and you seek maybe a professional or a friend that you can rely on to help you work through areas of weakness. Maybe you pull out a calendar and you create a schedule to help you work through an emotional experience. So these are things that society would teach you. And this rolls right into our next um, part of the RULER acronym, and that is regulating emotions appropriately. So we have to use our expressions uh, strategies. We, we either use what we already know or we know that we need to learn something new in order to regulate our emotions effectively. How we regulate our emotions is, is kind of on two levels. There's a reactive 
management and then there's also proactive management and when we're very young we, we kind of think of that toddler stage they're just starting to realize um, that they have emotions and you hear ten temper tantrums a lot well they are in the process of learning okay these are my emotions that I'm experiencing this is my impulse reaction right now is to throw a tantrum and then you work with those toddlers to develop strategies and then before you know it you might have um, you know reach that school age audience as they continue to grow where a child says I'm feeling really upset right now and so instead of throwing a tantrum they choose to do something else maybe they go find a, a different group of friends to hang out with or they go have some quiet time and that's be transitioning reactive management strategies to becoming uh, proactive so when we come back I'm going to walk you through some different techniques that you can apply across the age spectrum whether you're teaching someone uh, their social and emotional development skills or maybe you're trying to apply some to your own life or just helping a friend or family member. What a girl wants in her home kitchen. Ease of use, flexibility, fun, the latest kitchen design, Frigidaire Professional Real Stainless Steel for fewer finger smudges, a French door refrigerator, convection cooking, a quiet dishwasher. Have the staff at Genuine Appliance in Hayes demonstrate new Frigidaire professional appliances to find what you want. Genuine Appliance at 1224 East 27th in Hayes. Everything a girl wants. Some mobile phone providers think they can just take, take, take. <laughs> They'll all take an arm and a leg for a new phone. Got it. And look out if you go over your data limit. I didn't see that coming. Unlimited data plans as low as $20 per line. Come into any of our stores for a free, upfront, and honest consultation about your data and wireless needs. Next Tech Wireless, the carrier you trust. Gove County Medical Center provides compassionate care combined with today's latest technology. We offer a wide range of services to meet the growing needs of you and your family including surgical and swing bed services, cardiac and cancer rehab, as well as our pain clinic, long-term care, OB, and ongoing lactation assistance. Serving all of Northwest Kansas, our team of doctors and staff are committed to healing through caring. Visit govecountymedicalcenter.org and find us on Facebook to learn more. Your home's exterior is the best defense against harsh weather conditions. With insulated vinyl siding, energy efficient windows, spray foam insulation, and metal roofing from AquaShield Roofing and Construction, you can protect your home from howling winds and ice cold temperatures. Don't let Mother Nature interfere with the comfort of your home. Call or visit us online today for a free estimate. AquaShield Roofing and Construction. Our team is dedicated to your complete satisfaction. Welcome back. Again, I'm Nora Rhodes with Kansas State Research and Extension. Now as we explore social and emotional development and social emotional learning strategies, we're going to dig into some of those management strategies that we can use either on our own or as we're teaching younger people or, or maybe older people um, as they continue to build that foundation for their life. Uh, because we really do want to uh, promote and understand the importance of having soft skills. And so one thing that I'm going to teach you is, is a couple calming techniques. And then we're also going to discuss um, creating a safety plan and just a couple conversations that you can have with people to some kind of like mind strategies, um, if that's the easiest way to say it. Uh, essentially, the purpose of a management strategy, whether it's creating a planner or having a, a safe, safe plan in place, it's something that's designed to make us stop, to make us breathe, and to make us think. And so when we're having an emotional experience, if we don't stop, breathe, and think, we are often um, driven by our brain to do things that help us survive. And when we're in this survival mode, we tend to um, fight, we tend to flee, um, and sometimes we tend to freeze. And so these management strategies really do help us stop. 
They help us breathe because we need to get oxygen to our brain. Um, and by getting oxygen to our brain, we allow our brain to function at a higher level of thinking so that we can make, um, when I talk to young kids, I say good choices. A and then we want, want to think through this um, and intentionally choose what we're going to do. So um, one thing that I wanna show you is sometimes we are talking about calming techniques. So, you know, you hear that just count to 10. Well, sometimes you need to do more than that. And so here in my chair, I'm just gonna demonstrate, you know, if I'm working with students in a classroom that are frustrated, but they're sitting down, one thing they can do is they can take their chair and they can press down on the seat and internally count to five or count to 10. And then they can grab the bottom of the seat and they can pull up and they can let some of that aggression out um, without distracting the classroom environment. And this is something that I have honestly found myself doing in different work situations as well. So it's something adults can apply, apply to. Another thing you can do is you can do a pretzel. And this is thing, something you can do to manage your emotions without other people noticing. So you just kind of cross your, your arms and you put them to your chest. If you're standing, you can also cross your legs and you, um, if you put your tongue to the top of your mouth, what you're doing is you're requiring all the sides of your brain to think at the same time, and then you just want to take some deep breaths. And so when you're working with young kids, you can take your deep breath, and you can let it out, or you can teach them to breathe with their nose, which is even less distracting in a classroom environment. And so we're trying to make um, our emotional management strategies not be embarrassing or to draw additional attention to us. And so, you know, if a, I have a child who, you know, is st maybe stressed out in the school or home environment or maybe around some friends, I'm just going to say, why don't you just, you know, do a pretzel? Or if they don't know how to do this, just give yourself a, a hug or cross your arms like this, you know, take a deep breath, and then you're providing the oxygen to your brain that's needed so that you can make a uh, more intentional choice. Uh, other things that we can do is we can create a safety plan. And so when you're working with individuals or after I have this emotional state of exhaustion that last two weeks and I'm like, I just can't do this anymore, you can sit down and you can start to think about your safety plan. Okay, when I start to recognize that my, all my five senses are giving me this particular emotional experience, who can I talk to? So who are your safe people? Where can I go? Where is my safe place? And what are the activities that I can do while I'm there? It's important as we're teaching people these strategies that we're reminding them that they cannot hurt themselves and they cannot hurt others with their management strategies. So. Let's say a teenager chooses that it's their bedroom that is the safe place for them. And maybe they don't, they don't want to talk to someone in the house, but they have someone that they can call. Uh, you know, you want to say, well, who can you call? Uh, I can call my best friend or I can call my grandma. You know, you want to have them be as specific as possible when identifying who their safe people are and where their safe place is, but safe activities. You don't want a teenager to say, well, I'm just going to punch the wall because that helps me get my aggression out. Well, that can be expensive if they damage the wall and they can also hurt themselves. But you can provide the alternative of, well, if you feel like you need to use your aggression, why don't you just try to punch your pillow? You're not gonna have broken wrist, your broken fingers, and you're also not gonna um, damage your home. So it's providing um, things that you're willing to compromise on as you approach those strategies. One other stra management strategy that we can um, teach and apply ourselves is just to go for a walk. So go for a walk for three minutes, stop, and then for three minutes, discuss with someone, if you're with someone, or, or think to yourself, maybe you wanna journal about it, um, what you're doing. And then go for a walk again. That physical exercise is incredibly helpful, but you're also um, providing that opportunity to stop, slow down, remove yourself from that situation and to move forward. There are a wealth of management strategies that can assist you across the age spectrum. 
feel free to contact your Kansas State Research and Extension office. Uh, we have extension agents throughout in each county across the state of Kansas, and we would be more than happy to help you um, examine your social and emotional skill set and to help you come up with strategies that can be helpful maybe in your professional workplace or in your own home as you work with your own social and emotional needs and the social and emotional needs of those that you love. Thank you.